Hello and welcome back. We're on to part three of the QGD 1600P Guardian NAS and Switch. We've already talked about the Switch and Manage side of things and of course QTS 4.4.1 and all of those great little NAS applications. But today I want to focus on just one. I want to look at QVR Pro running on this device. For those of you that aren't already aware, which would be weird given you're on part three, this is a PoE switch, aka power over ethernet. It gives you the ability to connect powered devices via ethernet so they don't have to have their own main their own mains components for those of you that use outside cameras or even ceiling mounted cameras or just effectively awkwardly bloody placed cameras then chances are you'll notice that these cameras require poe or a poe splitter this device allows you to power a numerous devices such as ip speakers and ip cameras via the switch interface and that is the managed switch interface now we've talked about qts 4.4.1 let's make our way into qvr pro on this device now we've got the user interface here i've already logged into it here so i'm just going to skip the login screen and make our way in. I've connected a couple of Axis cameras, super pricey, and we're going to see what we can do with QVR Pro on this device. We'll be able to monitor the system resources, and remember, we not only have a couple of VMs running on this device, but we've also got that expansion device for the extra storage with the recordings from these cameras running onto that external storage. So we're on the QVR Pro user interface, and for those that haven't already watched my videos on QVR Pro, um, I do recommend you check those out because I'm not going to go into a vast amount of detail here today. But what I will highlight is that uh, this device arrived with eight camera licenses, which I know there's a number of you business users looking at this device. And there's me on camera there looking at the camera settings there. Look at me, look at my silly hair. Um, with this device, you can get eight camera licenses. Now, anyone that's looked at NASes that are going to be utilized as NVR devices, you'll know that once you get to two to four camera licenses on most devices, after that, you have to spend 30 to 50 quid per camera. And a lot of this money, the brands say, goes to supporting the development and the stability of their surveillance platforms. And if you're an enterprise level user, chances are, you know, you're going to use this software a lot. So, you know, investment in research and development is essential. But the fact that QNAP arrive, uh, give this device here with its PoE ports eight camera licenses is pretty special let's be honest so i'm not going to go into too much detail you can add more cameras as you can see we've utilized two of our eight available channels those are our licenses and we can set up event management settings for movement and more as well as scheduled recordings and view our recorded settings here within the graphical user interface present via our web browser but if we make our way to the client application, which you need to install on your Mac or Windows advice, uh, device, and that does get regular updates, from there, when you update the software, you can go straight into it here. We're going to skip the little tutorial, and this is QVR Pro. We've got the two cameras here listed on the left, and if we drag those in here, it's genuinely as straightforward as that, and we've got our cameras we can create a multitude of different setups here and right now i'm just going to wave at the cameras for you guys you can also utilize the pan tilt zoom settings let's go into this camera here we've got the ptz control interface here and we can click and go where we can use the screen here let's get that let's max screen that out let's get a nice big camera we can zoom in to a certain area there while i'm rabbiting away and create a separate window just based on what we're seeing on screen We'll make our way into this camera down here. Remember, we've still got this other camera here right now recording via that window. So now we've got five separate windows of different stuff. We can make our way in to those pan tilt zoom settings. Get the pan tilt zoom controls and we can move these cameras accordingly. So we're moving that one to the ceiling. We can bring that one down. Bring that back down to me here. Bring it around. We're using the Axis dome cameras here. Bring that back down going all the way and as you can see that is our TR004 and once again we can still monitor the other cameras while we're doing it and again you can set up distinct alerts and profiles and we even got the EMAP settings sorted out here so we can see a user environment here of where our cameras can be stationed with cameras being able to just moved and deployed within this EMAP to give us real-time information and a graphical user interface to skip between cameras. And if you are going to utilize the HDMI out and keyboard video mouse support of this device, you can then use a local standalone surveillance access point on this 
for maybe your security personnel, but also access this remotely via the internet and the network. So we'll make our way back into that camera setup here. We're going to zoom into one camera at once. There's me again, waving at the camera. And we can look at some of these other options too. We can open up the two-way talk, which I'm definitely not going to do while we're utilizing a mic here, unless you guys want your ears to explode. And on top of that, we can also go into the digital zoom and the optical zoom of different cameras. So we're going to go into that zoom functionality there and zoom out of it. We can take individual snapshots like that terrible picture that we just took of me there. And on top of that, we have more options as well to flick between different streaming options. So for those that invest in cameras that have got multiple streaming options built in, you can set it up that the QNAP QVR Pro software can run three different streams if your camera supports it. So we can flick between the different settings there of QVR Pro and flick between the profile that we created earlier all in real time. And because I'm utilizing the client software, all of this is saved on the local machine. You can see the GPU memory and CPU utilization in real time. And remember, the system resources are still being occupied by a number of those virtual machines that we saw earlier. Now, when it comes to setting up event management and motion detection, all of these settings are readily available within QVR Pro 1.3. We can create separate um, alert systems for each camera and modify them as we see fit. We can create different rules. We can create different subsets of rules and profiles for each camera or impose them on new cameras as we go. Um, if we go into here, we can look into the plugin center and get more real-time information about up applications and updates as they become available. And I do know that QVR Face will hopefully be arriving in 2020, which will be facial recognition and AI supported facial recognition and more in updates for QVR Pro next year. Now I'm going to wrap things up here and I do recommend you check out QVR Pro, uh, the full overview on th uh, this channel that I released a little while ago last year and I'll of course be doing updates to those videos as more and more updates for QVR Pro arrive. But if you've enjoyed this video, click like. If you want to find out more about some of the things that this new Guardian NAS switch can do, click subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.